Welcome to tonight's show on Words to My Face tonight. I already said it's tonight's show, but tonight we're talking Marvel vs. DC Universe. We're talking about Spider-Man, the animated series, greatest series of the 90s. And we're talking about three games from both of us. I mean, six games total that should be remade. Stay tuned. All right, I still have two seconds. Filler. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. And what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaw. And, um, yeah, Chewbacca, me and him aren't on speaking terms. Last night he got really, really wasted and did some things we don't need to talk about. So, Chewbacca's right now. Yeah. No, I don't think he wants me now, to Chewbacca. talk about that. No. I don't no, think Chewbacca. he wants I will not be silent anymore, Chewbacca. Okay, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. <laughs> But yeah, as you saw in my horrible intro for the evening, uh, we are doing the entertainment show tonight, because, eh, you know, it's Monday. Hey, yeah, stuff happens on Monday. Entertainment stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, we'll be talking about a lot of things tonight. Uh, we got one really big topic that we've been kind of sitting on for a little bit. Uh, a bunch of announcements came out, but we'll go into that. But let's start off this week the same way we start off every week, and that is with five reasons why you should not watch this horrible movie of the week. <laughs> Brendan's creepy face. Brendan likes doing the creepy face. He does. He's like, hey, I just want to do this every week. Yay. <laughs> hey, man. Don't take my joy. Come on. <laughs> the creepy face. Yeah. My thing. <laughs> that's, that's his thing. That's how he rolls. <laughs> but so this week I watched a horrible movie uh, called The Traveler. Uh, now, this was released back in 2011, 2012, um, and this is a Val Kilmer movie. So I said, hey, you know, Val Kilmer's a big actor. Let's see how it kind goes. Now, he was a big actor, I mean, really he, big in big, the 90s, at least. I mean, yeah, he, he's big. He's big. He was Batman. He was Batman and The Saint. You know, mm -hmm. big movies for him, you know? Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so it's kind of sticking with the horror theme because this was supposed to be a horror movie. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, didn't really. I really shouldn't watch horror movies because they don't really scare me. They just kind of annoy me. So uh, let's just jump right in and uh, start with number five. Or do I count down from number one? No, we're gonna start with, number, start with five. number five. We'll do it. Do it now. All right. Um. So the movie 2010. They don't really tell you what year it's set in, but you gotta imagine somewhere in the 90s, 2000s, 90s. Now there's no real cell phones, I guess, and that would be a big plot thing if they did have cell phones, but. There are no cell phones, so I'm going to guess late 90s, early 2000s. And um, one of the characters in the very beginning, there's two cops walking into a police station, cursing up a storm, and one of them says, watch your language, what were you born in a barn? Okay, now I have a problem with this. Number one, how many people in barns that were born there, like, have bad language? Think about all the things that are born in barns. <laughs> why, why would you have bad language? Is that, is, that might be an old expression or something. Maybe. Like, yeah. literally nobody said this since 1973, all right? Like, <laughs> I, I don't believe it's ever been uttered, except for this movie, since 1973. Uttered, uh, because of Bart. Edels. Uttered. Yeah. Uttered. Uh, whatever. Cows? Is that a cow joke? <laughs> I guess. Are you throwing in a cow joke there? <laughs> but yeah, so... <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, so... So, yeah, and I, I don't know what you, what do you got against people who are born in barns. You know, I figure, you know, if you're, like, a farmer and maybe you were born in a barn, you're a hardy, good-working, hard-working person. So, like, why do they have to have no, bad Those language? animals aren't using foul language. They're, They're not using they, language at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's number five. I can't remember which way I'm going. Let's go to number four. Um, and that is, um, this movie features a fat Val Kilmer. Now, what? not so much that he's fat, but that, I think he's, he's wearing a turtleneck, and it's just, like, way too tight. So, like, he's getting older, so his skin is getting a little looser, and it's just pushed <laughs> all, all the way up. And it's like, uh, it's just weird. It's distracting. I gotta, I gotta be honest, it's just distracting throughout the whole movie. You're like, Val Kilmer, when did you get fat? 
did you get fat for this role? And if so, why? This role does not require you to be fat. <laughs> Maybe that's why this is such a bad movie. Maybe this is the first role he had in a little while, and he got fat during that time. Yeah, and this is all he'll take him. Now, he doesn't have many... He doesn't speak a whole lot in this movie, um, and I, I bet you yeah, that's a good thing. So, uh, But he is a main, main character in the movie, so it, it's just... Yeah, yeah. Um, number three... Uh, there is an interrogation scene because it is about these police. They get this grifter and they're interrogating them, like they're beating them and tying them up. And one of the police officers gets a pair of scissors and says, "You better talk. You better talk right now, or I'll cut out your tongue. Talk, or I'll cut out your tongue." And I keep thinking to myself, "How are you going to get him to talk if you cut out of his out his tongue?" So yeah, usually you cut the the tongue cut out thing. That's a common thing, but that's usually to make them not talk ever yeah, again. Yeah, that's like you talked, so now we'll cut out your tongue. Not, you won't talk, so we'll cut out your tongue. It just didn't make much sense. Why? How is this an interrogation tactic to get somebody to talk, to cut out their tongue? Ha ha, yo, we'll show him. I, I, I guess it's still a threat. Like, yeah, but but yeah, you haven't started doing it, so... Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, again, it was just like, why... Like, they threw it in there, they're like, we want to have this, and because... Because eventually, I also think someone done. didn't understand how that was supposed to work. They've heard cutting out tongue in association with threats and talking, and they they forgot that key part about it, it's a not talk thing, and they didn't yeah. understand the talk. Will cut was, out your there was a real connection between cutting out the tongue and not talking. It wasn't yeah, just like was, oh, this is the thing we do. It wasn't a symbolic thing. It was. But again, yeah. it, it was a horror movie, so it seems like they're like, okay, what are some scary things we can throw in there? Uh, yeah, let's cut out somebody's tongue. Okay, why would we? You know, it's like instead of letting the the story dictate what happens, they're like, "This is what happens. Let's just make the story fit that, and then make it fit that in a really horrible way." So, yeah, that was number three. Uh, number two is okay. So there's a scene where they're standing outside in the rain. It's supposed to be a torrential downpour going on, and earlier it's it's kind of weird. Um, one of these cops got a dead cat thrown onto his head. So he's got all this cat blood on. So he's standing out on a roof, and there's a torrential downpour going on. It's not raining on him, it's raining just in front of him. Because none of said blood is even remotely <laughs> moving from his forehead. You know, it's like, didn't the rain wash that off? Huh? And they do bit, that maybe. multiple times. There's at least maybe three or four times. a little bit already? And stained his face? No. No, no. Uh, again, the rain would wash it off. <laughs> I mean, and the way the, the torrential downpour, and they do this several times in the movie, where they have the rain falling in front of the character, not on the character. It's just like, is it really that hard to just, just, just you know, move the rain a little bit so it makes it look a little more realistic? That just these actors do not want to get wet in this horror movie. <laughs> that's in the contract, I will not get wet by rain for more than two seconds of each scene. Okay, contractual obligations. We can't get water on them, but it, it just—it's just one of those things that when you're watching the movie, it just totally takes you out of the movie. And it's like, wait, this is horror. Yeah, so, but that's why it's on the horror movie of the week. But let's move it on to number five, and one, that is um, number one. We went number the opposite one. Way that's right, because <laughs> I wrote it one through five, but now I'm saying it the other way. So, but <laughs> number one, if I could count. Um, is, uh, so Val Kilmer plays an evil spirit in the movie. Spoil alert! Um, and if I'm spoiling the movie for you, that's... what do you, you, always do this, you always do the spoiler alert after the spoiler. After. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you get for trying to watch this movie after I told you not to. But yeah, so apparently the way to defeat Val Kilmer, the evil spirit, is to say his name like Rumpelstiltskin which they don't introduce until the very end, and they introduce it in the stupidest way possible, and then shoot him with a shotgun. That's how you be. <laughs> <laughs> and Say shoot his name, him with a shotgun. Shoot him with a shotgun. And Say that's his name weakens him, makes him solidify, so that you can shoot him with a shotgun. Oh, and I, and I forgot to mention that you have to stab yourself in the ears first. Okay, that... Why not? You have to. If you don't stab yourself in the ears, <laughs> then say his name... Then shoot him with a shotgun. <laughs> then it's not going to work. That's that's literally how the main character kills the bad guy. So, yeah. If you want to torture yourself to this movie, be my guest. 
but I've already told you everything you need to know about it. So please just save yourself the time. It's only an hour and a half movie, but that's an hour and a half. You could be, you know, doing anything, like uh, playing Destiny. That's a great game. You can play Destiny. You know, or you could you could go to a barn and milk a cow for an hour and a half, right, Brady? <laughs> that would be more than all that foul language, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you can curse up a storm on, in the barn, you know? <laughs> you can just go say whatever you want if you're from the barn, you know? So, yeah, so that's the five reasons why you should not watch this horrible movie, The Traveler, featuring Val Kilmer. So, yeah. Hope you had fun with that one. Um, and so let's take that and move into something that's good. And normally this is where we do the movies, but I'm going to save that for the next segment. Don't ask me why. I just decided to do it just right now. Brendan doesn't know that we're doing this. Uh, maybe just to throw Brendan for a loop. Down. Okay, we're pinned down. Pin down. But, uh, yeah, so <laughs> I wanted to talk about one of my favorite shows of the 90s, and Brendan, I believe I can say the same for you. Yeah, probably. At least, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. I know what you're talking about. Okay. But that is Spider-Man, the animated series. Now, this was a cartoon that went from about 1994 to 1998-99, somewhere in there. And it was kind of... It was, was it a Saturday morning cartoon? Yes. Yeah, it was. It was Saturday I, morning. Because I remember watching it in the afternoon a lot, too. Maybe they did um, some of the reruns there, but they definitely aired the new episode Saturday mornings. But it kind of came in there with, you know, um, when they were bringing out Iron Man and Fantastic Four. X-Men really started that all, the animated series. And it was Batman the only one of the same caliber as X-Men. Yeah. At that time. And now everybody really likes to look back and say, hey, Batman the Animated Series is probably the best, then maybe X-Men. But, you know, I mean, I love Batman, but when I was a kid, I wasn't a fan of Batman the Animated Series like I was X-Men and Spider-Man. So. But the news is that um, Kevin, I'm sorry, John Semper Jr., who was the head writer and producer of Spider-Man the Animated Series in the 90s, has actually announced that he is bringing back the entire voice acting cast from that. Not for a reunion special, like I would hope they would do, but they're, what they're going to do is they're actually going to do a whole new uh, cartoon, an animated series called Rocket Men, and that will be crowdfunded. So they did this at Kamikaze. Um, I believe that takes place in New York last week. Uh, and it was a pretty, pretty big announcement because... If you're like us, you love that show. That was one of the greatest cartoon, comic book cartoons. I, I'm going to put it in the pantheon of ever. Um, uh, I was, yeah, I was hoping that this was going to lead into a um, not bring it together for Rocket Man, but for a continuation of the Spider Man series or which, something like that. Like, oh, you know, whatever, 15 years later, 20 years later, however long, long it which is. Which is really what I want. I want, because they were doing this for the 20th anniversary, because 1994 is when it started. You know, that would be awesome because the way the cartoon ended was, like, the best finish. Like, you ever seen that Seinfeld episode where George is like, hey, I'm just going to tell a joke. Right after you tell the best joke, you can't get any more people to laugh. You walk out, even if it's the middle of, like, a meeting or something. Mm -hmm. And they went out in the middle of, like, their hype because they, they did the Secret Wars. Then back to back with that, they did, like, the Spider-Man Dimensions saga from the from the comic books. And they did those so masterfully and brilliant. And it was just like, oh, I want more. want more. And they even left you with a cliffhanger yeah. with Mary Jane well, they disappearing. Like, they tell you what's going to happen. No, but it's... Well, Mary Jane disappears into another dimension. And Spider-Man which was, which was... has to run off and find her. Yeah. And that's how end. they left. They had left out as a loose end previously. And then what, yeah, and uh, what is it? Black Widow says, mm -hmm. okay, well, because you've saved everyone forever... All right, I guess we get to show you, uh, you know, where your girlfriend is. Yeah, finally. Well, I but they don't. In, this long time ago. <laughs> in the cartoon, they don't. They just say, okay, she's lost. You've kind of settled everything down. Now yeah. you get to go and try to find her. Yeah, so but they, they, they give him the ability to, to finally. And yeah, but that's where you could pick up, is yeah, him going, finding Mary Jane, wherever. Mm -hmm. Um you know, there's plenty of stuff in the comics of after they're married and things like that, so you continue on, he finds her somewhere, and apparently can now dimensionally uh, roam around, so... He's a dimension hopper. But, uh, yeah, it's a, and, and actually, um, John Semper Jr. actually was talking about that. Now, he's actually started a Facebook page with Spider-Man the Animated Series and a bunch of different things, and he's saying, for, for a long, long time, he was very bitter that the series ended when it did, 
Um, now, he knew it was going to end then, but he wanted it to keep going, which I, I don't disagree with him. I think it was excellently done. Um, Sounds like every reason to continue it now. Yeah, uh, exactly. But he did Unless say he can't did come out. Or something like that. He came out and apologized because he was like, I thought it was going to be like, you know, like a happy ending. You know, you know Spider-Man's going to go get him. But he apparently it traumatized many, many of us um, being like, what? Mary Jane's gone? What the hell? Now we're not going to find him? Finder, you know, it was pretty crazy. So uh, I didn't mind that so much. I thought it was clear. Okay, he's gonna go find her now. Well, I kind of was like, Spider-Man is riding I, off. I would like to see more, sunset. but but yeah, yeah. I, I kind of saw that as Spider-Man running off and riding off into the sunset. You know, okay, he's got his adventure. You know, his adventures continue, but you know that was kind of a it wraps it all up. Okay, he saved New York. He got rid of the big baddies, the the carnage that was the carnage. Spider-Man was that it? That was gonna destroy yep. all the dimensions. Going to destroy and, all time and sp- space uh, forever, ever. So he kind of saved all universes, and uh, and then he got to move on. But yeah, so Rocket Man, uh, it sounds like an interesting idea. I know it's going to be amazingly uh, voice casted because literally the entire core cast, even Ed Asner, who had played uh, J. Jonah Jameson, um, will be returning. So you're going to have a great voice cast, but it's going to be about uh, it's about Think about the Rocketeer, you know, World War II settings, guys with rocket packs on them. It's going to be kind of a ripoff off Rocketeer, but it's going to be a secret uh, spy group of American agents who have said rockets that are going to be fighting against a Nazi, secret Nazi invasion of the United States with similar technology. So it sounds interesting. I probably could get behind it. I don't know where it's going to play because it is, again, it's going to be crowdfunded. So we're probably going to see it pop up online, maybe a straight-to-DVD release of the series. Um, hey, maybe Netflix will pick it up or one of those streaming services. But, you maybe know, I'm YouTube. actually... YouTube, hey, you never know. Hey. But uh, I would be interested to see it just because I know from previous works that, number one, uh, Semper, he can write, he can produce, and the cast can voice act. So yeah. Yeah. Now, the, the real question, though, is uh, whether they're going to be able to pull out as good of a job using what... It, new IP, um, you know, it worked very well for Spider-Man, but Spider-Man is one of the best, you know, compelling comic book stories out there. Yeah, he's always been very popular, and there's so much you can do with Spider-Man. They did a lot with Spider-Man. Yeah, and, and you already had the stories done badly, but Spider-Man's a great base. Is, yeah. is Rocketman going to be as good of a base? Can they pull out good quality out of it? Um, has it been too long? Well, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot. I don't know. Let us know what you think. Are are you excited about Rocket Men? Would you rather than just do another Spider-Man animated series? Hmm? And you know what? There was something that um, that we 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 looked over that I just realized. So the end of Spider-Man, the the original that series, mm-hmm. they have to be Carnage. They have to see who's the best superhero to do it. Only Beyonder can't defeat Spider-Man Carnage and stop it. Only Spider-Man can defeat Spider-Man Carnage. Well, because it was he brought in Uncle Ben. Yeah, yeah. And so really, Uncle really Ben be, was the only one who that? could beat Spider-Man Carnage. Yeah. Exactly. But does that make Spider-Man Carnage the most powerful Marvel superhero? Yeah, I don't know. When you put in some of those cosmic guys, like Eternity or whatever... But Beyonder is one of those cosmic guys. Yeah, but then there's, like, the Living Tribunal and stuff like that, and the one above all. Have you ever heard of him? He's like... Yeah, but he's like whoever God. it is couldn't come in and save the universe. Only Spider-Man could. Well, it's true. So well, yeah, why didn't the Living Tribunal show up? Yeah, that uh, doesn't make sense because they, no, they talk to show like, up whenever Beyond someone... uses almost all of his power to just go back and get Spider-Man together because um, he couldn't. Well, take and care he did set up the Secret Wars, didn't he? That was all Beyonder's yeah. doing. Yep. So hmm. I don't know, but let us know what you think. Are you excited for this new Rocket Men cartoon? Would you rather them just continue the Spider-Man series, or you know, anything else? Hit us up. Comments down below, of course. At where's my face on Twitter. Words to my face at gmail.com. Words to my face.com. We do have a website out there. Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways to get in a hold of us. But let's move it on. And this is a topic that I'm actually pretty excited to talk about. And we're going to talk about Marvel Cinematic Universe versus DC Cinematic Universe. And I think... All right, so I should talk about Kevin Durant. <laughs> no, it's just a dramatic <laughs> <laughs> lightning for this. <laughs> and I should clarify this because... When I say Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm just saying Marvel Studios Cinematic Universe. And when I say DC, it's really... Well, I mean, DC's kind of better because WB owns that all. So 
um, because we're not going to talk about the Sony ones, which is the Spider-Mans. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Fox, which has all the, the X-Men and everything like that. So, so we're, we're not going to talk about the best ones. Now I'm upset. I can't do this. The best ones? Marvel has done an amazing job. Uh, they have, Fox. but the best is still... Well, okay. All right, now X-Men's I love the, the best. core series of X-Men. I love the core movie series with the first class and the and the Apocalypse is going to be awesome and Days of Future Past was awesome. I love those. But, I mean, the Wolverine Origins, that was horrible. Uh, Wolverine 2 was uh, mediocre at best. They've messed up on a good amount of those, and so is Sony. I mean, Spider-Man 3, I liked it, but it wasn't really... But they had the best heights. They had the best heights. Well, yeah. X-Men has the best heights. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, again, we're going to just talk about Marvel Studios versus DC. All Um, right. And because there is, they both have come out and released their slates for the next about six years. Now, if you count in the Sony and Marvel uh, and DC and Fox productions, there's going to be about 40 superhero movies from between now and 2020. So there's going to be a lot. So we had to cut it down somehow, or else we could never talk about it. Um, yeah, but so, I sent you a link with all of them, too. Did you? No, well, I saw it. You don't look at the last night, though. I didn't get it, you jerk. I sent it to you right before the show. I'm looking Look. at it right now. Look at all these movies. Look at well, I'm about, to, I'm about to tell them. So let's no. start with Marvel. So Marvel's slate, you have uh, the next Marvel movie from Marvel Studios upcoming is Avengers 2, Age of Ultron. That's coming out in May 1st, uh, 2015. Then you have Ant-Man, which is coming out July 17th, 2015. And that will end, officially end Phase 2, which that's pretty cool. And then we have the ending next with Ant Man. Well, why are they ending Phase Two with Ant Man? Or does it just happen to have like maybe it's not related? But... I don't know. I guess we're gonna have to watch and see. I think that's part of the it thing. It seems right? odd for 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 the finisher to be Ant Man. Yeah, but that's that's the end of Phase Two. That is the official end of Phase Two. So then Phase Three is gonna start with Captain America: Civil War, uh, in uh, May of 2016. Then we're gonna have Doctor Strange who's rumored to have Benedict Cumberbatch be Doctor Strange, and it's looking like it's almost close to being confirmed, which is awesome. Um, and that'll come out in November 2016. Then in 2017, May 2017, we'll have Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Then in July, we'll have Thor Ragnarok. Then in November, we're going to have a Black Panther movie, which is cool that that finally got announced. And they're also saying that a lot of these characters are going to start showing up in movies before their solo movies. Like, we might see Ant-Man and Black Panther in Avengers 2 before, or maybe Black Panther, especially I hear he might be in the Captain America Civil War movie before they get their own. Um, Then we'll have Avengers Infinity War Part 1. That'll come out in May 2018. We have Captain Marvel, and that will feature the inverse Captain Marvel because there's been Captain Marvel, and there's, there's a whole bunch of iterations of that character, but they're going to focus on the Carol Danvers version. Um, then we're going to have the Inhumans come out in, um, uh, what is that, November of 2018, and then wrap it up, I think this is what wraps up Phase 3, is Avengers Infinity War Part 2 in May 2019. So we have a lot of movies coming out there, and then we have the DC slate. So I'm just going to run through this real quick. We have Batman vs. Superman coming out in 2016. Uh, March of 2016. Suicide Squad is going to come out in August of 2016. Then the next year we have Wonder Woman uh, at, in June of 2017. Justice League 1 will come out uh, November 2017. Going to get a Flash movie um, in March of 2018. Then we're going to get That's a Black Woman. They're doing, I guess they're going to introduce Flash in Justice League. Um, yeah, they they're kind of doing it a little differently there than um, I think they're just Marvel trying did. to rush out a justice. Hold on, League. let me just let me just get this the list through. We have all those discussions. We'll talk about that. But but um, then we have Aquaman in July of 2018. Shazam uh, the next year uh, in April 2019. Justice League Two uh, will uh, be you missed one. Which one I think it's still to be confirmed, but there's going to be a Lego Batman in 2018. Okay, really, you're going to do that to me? And it's by Warner Bros. Uh, okay, okay, fine. You're right. It belongs. It belongs on the list. You are right. It um, is, I, I, I am going to be thrilled to see how they tie in Lego Batman with the rest of the DC universe. <laughs> DC universe. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so then we have Multiverse. Shazam is April 2019. Uh, Justice League Two will be June 2019. 
Cyborg will be coming out in April 2020. Then we'll have Justice League 2 come out in June 2020. Um, and then there's also going to be a Green Lantern in 2020. Not They'll don't reboot that one? Yeah, because well, they need to reboot it bad because that last one was horrible. They've also said that there's going to be a Ben Affleck, Batman movie somewhere in there, and a Man of Steel 2 somewhere in there. They haven't announced mm -hmm. any dates, but those are going to come. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if the Ben Affleck Batman movie is the Lego Batman movie? Well, because they already have Will Arnett as the voice of Batman, so that probably can't happen. They're changing it. <laughs> they're, they're going to change it. But let's talk about, now that you know all the bazillion movies that are going to come out of those two studios in the next six years, let's talk about a little bit of the differences. Now, Marvel Studios has, I'd say they have more of a proven track record with their characters. I, I'm Absolutely. trying to think of a Marvel Studios movie that they've done bad, and I can't think of one right now. Um, um, hey, Iron Man 2 was kind a of... Few that, yeah, there's a few in there that were not great. I wasn't um, a huge fan of Thor 1 either, so... Yeah, yeah the Hulk movie there. was okay. Well, The Incredible Hulk was good, but the one before that, um, well, that with was uh, Eric Bana in it was horrible. The Ang Lee directed one I thought was just garbage. Hot. Garbage. Yeah, that wasn't Marvel Studios though. I thought uh, I didn't think anyway. I think it was, um, but it was. That's why they rebooted it like three years later. Um, but uh, they have a more of a proven track record than DC and WB does. Now, that's kind of pushed into the side all the Batman projects because most of those have been awesome, and those are all WB movies. Um, but when you think about like Green Lantern, was not a fan of that. That was some hot garbage too. Uh, yeah. You have you have uh, what was the other one? Um, there was a super. There's a couple failed Superman movies. Well, yeah, there was the Return of Superman, which was garbage. Uh, Man of Steel wasn't horrible, but I didn't think it was it was that good. But now again, getting I didn't into think Return Superman. of Superman was garbage either. It was kind of a just darker rehash of the first, the original one from the '80s. Garbage. Like it, Man of Steel was better, but Return of Superman was garbage. I, I just well I, I enjoyed it enough. It okay. was not a it's not one that I care about enough to see again. I yeah, saw it well, once. I saw it once I and I was like, it. please let me forget that. You know, <laughs> but um but I'm not a big fan of Superman anyway because his superpowers is he's just better at everything than anybody. So that's he's a cheat character. He's just one of those guys. Um so I'm not sure who's gonna you know, the D C universe definitely has some of the greatest characters to pull from. And they've shown that they can do it right with Batman, um, but that's when they get like a legendary director like Tim Burton to come in and do it, or Christopher Nolan to spearhead some of those things. So what are they going to do? Now, I believe Joss Whedon is going to be in on the action, which he's done some really good things. Uh, so I'm excited to see that. But Honestly, uh, you know what I think is the, uh, the key to Batman's success over and over? And Marvel's success... Like, we talked about, yeah, DC has plenty of great characters, but if you compare, I always felt DC was less accessible. It was more about these are the the, the supermen. These are the, the guys that are just so far out there. Marvel was made to be a little bit more relatable. Like, yes, these are superheroes, mostly, but they're not that far beyond reach. They're normal people that either gain superpowers or X-Men. They, they, they have it. Some of them have it the whole time, but... Um, but they're a little bit more accessible. They're they're not as overpowered as a lot of the DC ones happen to be. And, and you're the, right, that's probably the key with Batman. Batman yeah. is the is the one that's like that. He doesn't. And they have do go out of their way to show the flaws in a lot of these characters mm -hmm. in the Marvel universe. They say, okay, yeah, these are you know, this is a superhero, but he's with regards, you know, the exception of Thor. You know, here they're human. They have their flaws, and even Thor, they show his flaws. You know. They show his, you know, compassion. and they're conflicted. Uh, mm -hmm. There, there's shades of gray in there. They're not even the really good guys. Sometimes have their their dark streaks, and the bad guys have their good streaks, and things like that. It happens a little bit in DC as well. That that's yeah. Admittedly, it happens in DC, but you get more of a feeling of that uh, readily from Marvel, I felt, than than yeah. DC, except for in with Batman. Batman, Batman, you're right. They they just you know Batman. And I think that's why like Batman I said, you kind of push Batman to the side of all of WB's failures with the DC Comics, just because they've done Batman over and over so well. So it, it, but again, the Marvel movies have consistently been pretty pretty solid, and the way they've 
kind of started to tie them all into the same universe, and they kind of started with a plan, which helps because you have Kevin Feige, you know, sitting on top of it all. I don't know who's sitting on top of all of the, the WB stuff, if there's one person who's kind of like, okay, this is going to go to that, to this, to that, to this, to that, to this, you know, so, uh, you know, you can tell Marvel has more of a plan to link everything in together, but it looks like DC will be turning into that with the Justice League and everything like that, so... Um, now, one plus for DC is that they do own all the characters under one umbrella. Uh, WB, I mm-hmm. believe, has full access to the whole catalog, whereas with Marvel, you have it split up between three studios. So it definitely would make it easier for them to take a lot of those big, huge, overarching stories and connect them together. I mean, are we going to see... Probably not going to see a crisis on in- Infinite Earths, uh, just because they have one streamlined storyline. That really came about because... It was just so convoluted in the DC universe. But, you know, are we going to see, like, a Blackest Night, you know, thing where all the superheroes die and come back? You know, maybe they'll kill off a couple superheroes in a couple movies and bring them back in the Darkest Night. Or, you know, we might... I think the question on a lot of people's minds for the DC universe is, is this new setup that they're they're really trying to tie in with the DC stuff, is that going to be based off of the new 52 or not? Or is it going to be based that's, that's on good question, The New 52 has come through, and a lot of people don't really like a lot of the stuff that's happened with that. Yeah. So that's going to be a big question. But, but we will see. We will if see. DC's committed to it, they're going to try and push it with, with the movies. But, um, but we'll, yeah, we'll see. Um, but I think that's kind of where the, 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 the movie universe kind of separates itself from the comic universe. Yeah, they borrow the stories from there, but they never copy them directly. Yeah, and I'm wondering um, how much control um, DC, the the publisher, has over the direction of the movies. Like we talk about, it's, it's the the DC universe, but um, it's Warner that's making the movies. Yeah. Warner owns DC, of course, um, but Warner's a bigger company. Marvel, even though they're part of uh, of Disney now, Marvel Studios takes control of the movies that we're talking about. Um, and so they, so the comic book making group, even yeah, it's a different division. But there's there's more of a connection there. I'm I'm wondering if there's more abstraction um, being under Warner and Warner. Yeah, but again, um, Warner can studios. take all the characters and they can do that. Whereas Marvel can't now. I mean, yeah, there are talks with bringing in Spider-Man or something like that from Sony I'm, over to Marvel. But I'm just wondering how much the comic book maker, the the comic book division, is going to be involved. I know they're going to be involved to, to some extent. And obviously, Warner's taking the characters, but. Um, maybe Warren will go in different directions than necessarily uh, than DC, the, the comic book makers would. Um, whereas it seems to me like Marvel, the two are, are closer together. Um, Warner and DC, even though they have everything, it seems like that could be abstracted out. It could be a matter of which studio under Warner they give a project to decides how to go with it rather than... Um, Tying in with how things are going in the in the comic books, rather than tying in with the personalities there, uh, and we've seen too that they, they they seem to kind of do this. Like with Batman, ones they those it's gone in so many different directions. Yes, they've often been based on some Batman comic book stuff, but it, it's it seemed to me, and I'm not behind the scenes, um, that they let whoever's like heading up the producers and the writers heading up whatever project just go with it themselves, without necessarily caring about how the... Yeah, which, which works for me. I mean, you want to have a little bit of a separation. Comic books don't work as movies if you just directly port them, because, I mean, it just it wouldn't work. Comic books work but as... we've seen how well things work. have worked out for Marvel being that having that close tie. Like, it's not like they're directly porting. But no, but they're, they're borrowing stories, tie. but they're changing them to make a more real life. So, that's pretty interesting. And, and, you know, moving on from that, I want to, you know, we're finally, and maybe... Kevin Feige heard, watched Words to My Face last week, where I complained about there not being any diversity in the Marvel lineup, because we're finally seeing some diversity, you know, um, we have, uh, uh, getting a Black Panther movie, uh, so that's the break from the, you know, 30 to 40 white guy superhero, then we're getting a Captain Marvel uh, movie, which will be a female lead character, the Inhumans have a lot of female lead characters in there. Um, just like with uh, DC, they had already announced the Wonder Woman. Suicide Squad has a lot of dif- dif- uh, different people in there. Um, Cyborg, who's a black superhero. So we're finally seeing more diversity that is reflected in the comics because both of these groups have huge gr- uh, you know, waves of diversity. But we weren't seeing that in the cinematic universe. And I just think that this is going to just bring... I think bring part in- of that was just not having 
X Men, you know, because X Men is is the the biggest diversity point for Marvel because that's the whole point of X Men. If these yeah. are a diverse Black Panther group. was one of the main members. I, I mean, the Avengers they jump in and out, of course, but Black Panther was always a big part of uh, the Avengers. So why why couldn't you just introduce them before that? You know, I mean, it's it just I think that they're finally. And, and it's going to make it more interesting because you open it up to across the world instead of just one little part. So I just I like to see that both groups are doing this because that just makes the characters more dynamic. It, it just makes it more relatable to everybody, not just one person. I mean, the area we live in, there's so much diversity here. You know, just seeing a bunch of white people running around on the screen does not make me think of real life. So, yeah, I know it's, it's weird coming from white guy. But... That's how I feel. So that's that's what I'm gonna say. But um, yeah, and then the other thing I want to talk about, uh, the last thing, um, is that looks like Marvel uh, with the Guardians of the Galaxy, with the Inhumans, is actually spreading out into the cosmos. Whereas it looks like with DC, it's the cosmos coming down to Earth. You know, Superman coming from outer space and everything like that. So I just I, I find that very interesting because both of them have very big galactic things. Um, you know, Green Lantern, half of his stories take place out in space somewhere. But it seems like they're really going to be focusing on the Earthbound antics of what happens. Whereas it started with Marvel with the Earthbound stuff, like the aliens coming here, and now they're going to go out with the Guardians of the Galaxy out there somewhere. And, you know, those are going to tie into other stories here and there. And then the Inhumans, if you don't know about them, I think we'll do a real spotlight on them some other time. Uh, but they started as humans that were abducted by Kree and experimented on, given superpowers. So it's just... I find it interesting. I don't know which way I like better. I think I like both ways pretty darn good. Um, I just yeah, I found that kind of interesting. Yeah, honestly, I'm going to say I, I do still lean towards Marvel. Um, I, I, I like their stories better. I think they have a better track record. I like what they're planning to do with Marvel uh, and what they have done so far, but you never know. You know, DC maybe could show us up. Maybe maybe can make us way the other way. Plenty of room to prove us wrong because, uh, and now there's the whole thing, you know, with Marvel. They started later than DC did, so they had to develop their characters a lot later. And a lot of people say it's not about who invents it, <clears throat> it's about the next person who comes right behind them because they are able to see what went wrong with said things and make it better. So a lot of the characters you see from Marvel and DC kind of mirror each other. And I think I, I agree with you that I like some of the Marvel ones better because they see what DC did and said, okay, well, let's change his character a little bit more. Uh, you know, he'll have similar power type, but he'll, you know, be a little bit different. And eh, just kind of, they innovated on the original invention. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I feel. But let us know what you guys think about any of these uh, things in the Marvel Universe. Who are you voting for? Is it going to be Marvel D uh, Movie Universe or DC Universe? And again, when I say Marvel, I mean the Marvel Studios versus WB. So... Let us know. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Words My Face.com. Google Plus on Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's move it on to my favorite segment of the night. And this is why I say this so Brendan gets time to bring the sound effects up. And that is Quick Hits of the Night. Okay. I was, I was just fluffing it there because I didn't have the page. I wasn't really fluffing it for Brendan's sake at that point. So I got to give it. I, he was ready. I was ready. So. But let's move it on to the first quick hit. And that is um, Zombies will be in this year's COD, Advanced Warfighter. Uh, all of you out there who said, who said, I don't know if it'll fit in with the futuristic thing, it's coming. Whether it fits or not. Well, no, uh, Zombies fits in anything. <laughs> there's, there's nothing that Zombies doesn't fit into. So yeah. Except for really small spaces. Okay. Unless you got really small Zombies. Well, they fit on that dun, scene. Dun, dun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so let's move it on to the next quick hit. Nope. Okay, no, we're not going to move it on next quick <laughs> Oh, now we are. Um, and that is uh, Colbert Report. Unfortunately, um, its nine-year run is coming to an end. It will. The last episode will be on December 18th, and that is because Stephen Colbert is moving to The Tonight Show to take over for David Letterman. Or is it The Late Show? The Late Show to take over for David Letterman. Um, so we're going to miss that character because he's not... Stephen Colbert has said he will not continue the Colbert character 
it wouldn't which work it is a as character. well in, on, uh, <laughs> on a late on night the late show, show. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. which is understandable. Which is understandable. But you know, his a lot of the same humor and the wittiness and everything he brought to that will still come over. So mm. yeah, so I'll miss it though. I, I did it. I did really love that show. Um, but let's yeah, move it on to next quick hit. And that is Star Wars Battlefront, the one being done by Dice, has a release date of holiday 2015. So it is coming. It is coming. Not after soon, how long? Coming. Well, the, after they canceled one whole project and they rebooted it with a different yeah. studio. Man, I remember I used to, uh, watching the alpha tests for it three years ago. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, come on now. And now one thing is they are going to make it an FPS. So I don't know how I feel about that. They had an FPS mode in Battlefront 2 that I would sometimes do. I didn't do. use it, though. I never used it. I, 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 the only reason I used it is because it gave you better um, targeting and zoom for yeah. your, your weapons. But, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with I'm you. Not I didn't say, I'm not like, I'm not going to buy the game now. But, you know, I, I did like it. It was, it was a very good third-person shooter that you were seeing less and less of when it came out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I guess I can understand why they would go to first-person shooters because that's just so big. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. but let's move it on to the next quick hit, and that is Marvel will be having a Marvel characters slash Attack on Titan crossover event. Um, they just released Attack on Titan, Titan the uh, the anime the anime yeah, um, and it will be a comic tr- uh, crossover uh, now. Um, the picture that had Spider-Man uh, flying around in there with some Titans coming after him. So Spider-Man would make a lot of sense because his. Uh, I don't know if you you've seen the show Brian, right? Attack on Titan. I I I never got it on Cartoon Network, and then I don't watch uh, subtitle things because I don't like to read and watch. So no, I haven't seen it. All right, so I've seen it all, but um, the the omnidirectional devices um, they operate a lot. I, I kept thinking that is the way that things move is a lot like Spider-Man swinging hmm. on his webs, other than they don't have to use their hands for it. So, but uh, and but it is a it's not just Spider-Man. We, they will be bringing in a lot more characters from the Marvel universe. So curious to see that when that pops out. I would and imagine Wolverine will show up. Well, he should. I mean, why not bring the most popular Marvel character out there? And he's got the blades on his hands already and everything. And he can heal like the... Oh, they might think he's... That's one of the things the Titans can do is they can right, super so let's heal. Not the no, I mean, that's one of the things they tell you, like, the first five minutes. But you got to say spoiler alert after you spoil it. not a spoiler. After, after you happen. spoil it, you have to say spoiler alert. That's what this show does. It's not a twist. <laughs> Somebody they they heal themselves. Spoiler alert! Come on, that's how, that's all you gotta but it's say. It's not a spoiler. Like they tell you the first episode. This is one of the major so spoilers. I didn't know it, so you spoiled it. That's all I'm gonna say. Because you let's did. Move it on to the last. <laughs> let's move it on to last quick hit. And that is uh, box office. Um, this is probably the worst box office weekend I have ever seen. Um, Nightcrawler came in number one with 10.9 million, tied. I guess, so it's not really number one. Tied for number one with Ouija with 10.9 million. The next one after that was Fury with 9.1 million, and Gone Girl came in fourth with 8.8 million. So That's kind of surprising. You'd think that a lot of people would be out there for the, the Halloween stuff, but maybe they're all partying. I don't know. I don't know. Um, that is the weakest weekend I think I've ever seen. Um, in I bet Nightcrawler office. did as well as it did, just because people were hoping that it was... The uh, the X Men Nightcrawler. Like X Men Nightcrawler, let's go. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't Nightcrawler. <laughs> we want our money back. But yeah, so that was the quick hits of the night. Are you done? Okay. Now. <laughs> so, and so let's move it on to our last story of the night, and that is um, it's our video game segment. Yay! Yay! But uh, so GTA San Andreas HD remake has just dropped. You can pick it up for about four dollars, three dollars and seventy five cents, I believe, on Xbox. That's why did San Andreas has an HD remake. That was one of the bigger ones. A lot of people really, really love that one. Now I was more of a fan of Vice City, but yeah, that's what I was thinking they would do. I thought that was the most popular one, but no, I think San Andreas was the most popular ones of the GTA threes because that was one of the there was three or four versions of GTA three. But there was the original one, three. Vice City, uh, San Andreas, and I think there was something else in there. Mm. Um, but that just came out. Again, you can pick it up for about $3.75 uh, on Xbox, $4 everywhere else. Um, but that got me thinking that uh, there's plenty of other games out there that should be getting remakes, HD 
remasterings and stuff like that. And so I, we just wanted to give you a list of our top three that should get um, some remastering. Uh, so, Brennan, why don't you uh, give us three real quick? All right. Uh, well, number three, and I know this is never going to happen, but Skater Die 2. No! You're not allowed to say Skater Die 2 for number three. Did you say that? <laughs> Do you have that on your list? <laughs> we didn't discuss right this at all. Like, you told me right before the show <laughs> that this was happening. And I just let everybody know my three, but that's not fair. All right, fine. It's a show stuff. Look, look. I get scared. Die three. I've got. I've beaten the number two world record in that game for the ramp. So I, it's my game. I have my game. Anyway, so Skater Die 2. <laughs> Skater Die. Uh, I agree. That would be a great one to remake. All Especially now that... Old that ladies yeah. repainting people, picking up chili cheese fries. Yeah, now that you have more buttons and... Because it, it, it was a game that definitely lacked buttons because they had to use the direction pad with a button to do different moves um, and to deal with that. And... Um, now that the, uh, the the skateboarding genre really came into fruition and has been dealt with better, um, you can see it utilizing the engines that we see in like Tony Hawk style no, games. No, yeah, I think I but don't want all... it to go that far. Okay, I, I still want to be side scrolling. Yeah, you can do that too. Um, either way, though, but you get more. You can deal more with the uh, the skateboarding dynamic. I was also thinking something like a, a Jet Grind Radio. Uh, so, but um, Checker, either way, whatever you do, make the game again. I want that RAM mode. I want an extended HD uh, adventure mode that's not mm-hmm. quite as slow to pick up. Because I know a lot of people that I've shown it to, they don't like the game, really because of how slow it is to, to start up um, to, and to, to do things initially. Like It is a little bit difficult until you get the first few boards ready. Um, but it's such a fun game. It's yeah, it's an awesome just... game. I mean, you get to pick up eggs and throw them at people. Uh, yeah. I mean, my favorite part of the first level was beating the boss, the mayor's yeah, wife. the mayor's wife. wife. <laughs> throw eggs at her and spray paint her. And, and, and again, and your currency... blows up into her head. <laughs> yeah, and, and your currency is chili cheese fries and, like, uh, milkshakes. All in the sewers that you find in the sewer. Tacos and fries and... <laughs> yeah, tacos. Every level, you did something almost completely different. Every level had a very different dynamic for it. Now, there wasn't many levels, but every level was very different. So, very enjoyable game from back in the original Nintendo days. So, I totally agree with the Skater Die 2 for Nintendo. But, all right, give us number two for you, Brendan. Number two, um, I'm going to go with mm, Psychonauts. Psychonauts, okay. So it's not that old of a game. Not not like, but obviously several things are getting uh, remakes. But uh, you know, they've talked about doing a Psychonauts 2. It's, I, I don't, I doubt it's going to happen anytime soon. But an HD remake, I could see a little bit better. You know, update the graphics a little bit. The graphics have held up all right, um, but they could use some tweaking. You can polish um, it. It was an Xbox game, so you could. I would like to see. Yeah, I, I would like to see. Uh, you know, maybe a few levels added in, um, and. <sighs> maybe some bigger levels uh, for certain things. Like, it's not a small game, but there's definitely more that they could have done with some of these Dream World stuff, uh, I feel, um, if they just, you know, had some more power behind it. They could put more sprites on the screen, for instance. Yeah, but that was one of those super imaginative uh, Tim Schafer games. Yeah. Uh, So, and the way he's doing stuff, I believe Grim Fandango is getting a remake, right? So Exactly. So it it wouldn't be out of the realm to see that. And so yes. if that does happen, Brendan is going to take credit for it happening. Just you know, <laughs> yes. Even if it's already in the works, where he's going to take credit for it. So, but Brendan, what's the number one game you want to see remade? Yeah, this might uh, be a little surprising to every... No, it's not. It shouldn't be. Um, Super Metroid. Yeah, see, I thought Super Metroid 2, but they already have the Primes. I mean... That's... No, but that's the thing. Uh, the reason I say... And Primes are good. I have Prime Trilogy. Um... It's not. It, it's a different style of game altogether, though. Gotcha. And I guess it's... they could go the Shadow Complex route. Um, if you played that, that was an arcade game on Xbox, which was pretty much a Metroid ripoff, but they did polish it up and did all that really cool stuff. So I, I guess you could get a pretty cool Metroid thing in there. Yeah, and the it, but you it would need to be a 2D side scroller Metroid. Um, well, no, you can make it 3D, but have the, you know, like, Shadow Complex the side had scroll, yeah, 3D exactly. realm in there, but side-scroller, yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, keeping the same dynamics of, of the the great speed run ability. Like Metroid's always been a game that they encourage you to do it quickly. Um, I I got into watching speed runs of video games because of the Super Metroid speed runs, which a lot of people say it's just like the best game for speed runs because of the things that they built into it that are that take skill but allow you to just change the way you uh, you go through the whole game and speed it up. Uh, mm-hmm. Speed it up because you skip areas or simply don't have to skip areas that they force you to before because you can do a s- cool trick, learn to figure out a cool trick and do it well and just keep going and keep and get things out of order and things like that, which was really cool. Um, but also just, it was so, it was a solid gameplay and you expect that out of Nintendo, especially from that era. Um, and they delivered one of the my favorite platformy games, and probably definitely my favorite like shooter platform game. Yeah, um, it was it was definitely an, a very entertaining game. The yeah. the level dynamics, everything, the upgrading and, and everything that was it was awesome. And you can already play that game just over and over. So if you get an HD remake, well, I was going to play it over before anyway, but now I get it in HD mm-hmm. and I can play it on my newer systems. So there Other you go. Environment, everything. There you go. All right, well, I, I like your list, especially number three, since that is the same exact one as mine, Skater Die 2. Uh, my number two was uh, Star Wars Dark Forces. That was a great shooter, great FPS in the Star Wars realm. And, I mean, a lot of people, if you played it, you loved it. Just, that's all I'm saying. It took you through a lot of different Star Wars things. Like, you were the, the person in the very first level who stole the Death Star plans that they used in the very beginning of the... I mean, at the end of Star Wars number one to blow up the Death Star... They, t- they intertwined you with a lot of the Star Wars stories. Where the, what what happened with those? So I, I loved that game. Dark Forces was one of my favorite games. Now that was a PC game that I played it on. You could get it on PlayStation Two, but that version sucked. So mm-hmm. uh, good HD remake with some new controls and stuff like that. So you could play it with like on a console with the dual sticks and everything like that. Would be a lot of fun. Um, and then my number one game is not going to really be a game. It's not fair because I include multiple games. And I pretty much said any Final Fantasy game from PlayStation 1 or lower. <laughs> you could give me a HD remake yeah, of that. Than I would buy the, the other one. 9, like, 8, 7, uh, 3, American 3, six. American 2. Yeah. Um, I would love to play any of those HD they remakes. Kinda, uh, I guess it wasn't HD, but it was. they did the remakes of 1, 2, and 3 at some point. Uh, vaguely did a remake yeah. of... Uh, five and six, but I think it was one of those deals where they just they added in some cutscenes. Yeah, they added in nice, some cutscenes, but everything else was really the same. Change. But again, they they, they really, released yeah, those for PlayStation. Much. They released those for yeah. PlayStation. So yeah, um, you could give me a little bit better character models without really taking it to the the you know especially like six. Mm-hmm. Just you know, smooth some of the edges. You know, give you some more three D looking characters, but still keep it that kind of top down look that you yeah. got from those and, games. And with six, they they. They already showed some designs for it when they did do the the remake for the PlayStation um, in the cinematic ones. So they had 3D models and mm-hmm. everything, and it, it looked nice-ish. Obviously, you'd want it to be even better than that now. And um, if you are a Final Fantasy fan, you know the most... I don't know if I can say the most iconic, but definitely top three of the most iconic scenes ever to happen in a Final Fantasy series was that Opera House mission. Uh, level, which was just awesome. It was just a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. You enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, it's just something that I'd like to play again, but you know, a little bit better graphics. So, and obviously, know, everyone's been little... wanting seven forever. And yeah, they, seven. They okay. should have done seven a million years ago. But six would be cool too. So I don't know. Let us know what you guys think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at Gmail dot com. Google Plus and Facebook. And uh, did I say Where's My Face dot com? I meant it. Yes, you did. Uh, let us know what you think should be remade. Uh, give us, you know, one, two, or three games. And if you say Skate or Die 2, then uh, we'll have to start a Kickstarter and get that done. So <laughs> hit us up, let us know. But uh, I think that's going to about do it for the evening. Um, as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brittany. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint.
All right. Good night, everybody. My hair was too gelled up. I didn't.